Future Chairs No Waving, episode number 712, James Best and more. Two Chairs No Waving is brought to you each week by the folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Folks, it's time to head over to Weavers and pick up your 2023 Andy Griffith Show wall calendar. They usually sell out before the first of the year, so head over there and check them out. Get your wine for yourself. And while you're there, you might want one that's a daily calendar, too. So get the 2023 Mayberry Day-by-Day Flipbook calendar. You will not regret it. Head over to WeaversDepartmentStore.com and see what else you might like to have. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations. From listeners like you, the executive producer of episode number 712 is Mark Hopin. So thank you, Mark. And thank you for being here in Mayberry with me. It's uh, always fun to spend some time in Mayberry. I was away last week. Uh, You probably didn't notice. But I was away last week uh, actually shooting the final parts that I have to shoot for the Mayberry Man series. So, folks, if you haven't seen the Mayberry Man movie, it's on sale at Weaver's right now. You can get it at a reduced price. So head over to Weaver's Department Store and check it out. You can get the DVD. Or you can watch it on Amazon Prime. You can do however you'd like. But uh, the DVD, you can even get one signed by Floyd, which is me. <laughs> and it doesn't cost you anything. If you'd like to donate to me, that would be just fine. Would you do? So, uh, hey, we're going to jump back to an episode. This is actually something I would played on an episode about five years ago. Uh, this first thing with James Best. And I was just watching it the other day, and it's something I really want to make sure people have seen. Uh, and it was just an amazing piece of work with uh, David Browning and James Best. And I'm going to throw it to me talking about it. And uh, if if I don't give enough description in the previous version from years ago, I'll come back after it's over and tell you a little bit more. But uh, it was... Uh, James Best was just an amazing man, and it was so fun uh, to be able to be around him and just to be a part of uh, all the fun that he did in Mayberry. And David Browning also was in that boat. He he is an amazing guy. Uh, still is. He's just not doing Mayberry events right now. But uh, what a great thing he did. So let Lee go ahead and throw you over there. Because I know you're going to enjoy this. Uh, it's a it's a great uh, great clips with James. So Alan from the past that looks an awful lot like Alan now. Hmm. Five years, I don't look too bad different. But anyway, <laughs> let's take it away. I got to tell you, it's uh, it's always such a blessing just to be able to spend time in Mayberry with you. And uh, this episode, we are going to be uh, we're going to be visiting about James Best. James Best was a classic, classic person uh, for Mayberry fans. He, you know, he was a he was always great for us to be around, to be with. And I tell you, there was just nothing better than spending time with James and just being a part of everything that he was doing with us in Mayberry. We, uh, we were able to spend hours and hours uh, over the years with James and I, I just got to tell you, he was, uh, he's always so fun. And so I'm, I'm glad as I was cleaning up my room recently, I was able to find a collection of videos that I didn't realize I had. So I ran across this video from uh, 2007 and it is of James at Mayberry days, 2007 at Colonel Tim's Talent Time. Now, James and David Browning, the Mayberry deputy, they did these routines many times over the years. Every time it was different. This was fairly early in them doing these because uh, it's not as long later on as as they continued to develop this entire routine they did, it it got longer. So what you're going to hear or see if you're watching the video is James Best on stage at Mayberry Days in Mount Airy, North Carolina at the Andy Griffith Theater uh, during Colonel Tim's. And he's coming out and uh, he, he sometimes came out as Jim Lindsay, the guitar player from the Andy Griffith Show. And other times he, he would come out and just talk about playing that role on the Andy Griffith Show. Now this time, that's what we're going to hear. So he's going to be talking about uh, how he got the role 
and you know that he had written some songs and then what ends up occurring because i want you to kind of set this up for you is that at some point you know he's just gone too far and barney the mayberry deputy comes out on the stage and just has to stop it got to stop him this is ridiculous you got to stop <laughs> so what you're going to see and hear is this uh this wonderful wonderful time uh great memory that we have with james best and the Mayberry Deputy, David Browning. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. So let me take you right to it. So th now remember, this is recorded in the theater uh, from a camcorder. So the audio quality may not is not going to be as good as normal, but I'm hopeful that you'll be able to pick it out and there won't have any trouble hearing. So, and I want you to imagine in your eyes, imagine in your mind's eyes, if you're listening, uh, James is standing on stage. He's dressed as a, uh, just a, he's got on his, blue dark blue pants he's got on a jacket that's zipped up you can't see anything under it uh, and then at some point uh, i'll try to mention so that the listeners will know what basically ends up happening during this routine is barney comes out and inter interrupts him and he says you know you're not you're not a law around here you're just a deputy and then he comes out and he rips off his jacket puts on his hat and announces that he's roscoe so that's set up anticipation is there so let's get this thing on the road so here you go now i'm a member of the state <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a stand-up comic uh i'm lucky i can act i'd still be the chicken coal in kentucky my dad was a coal miner and uh <clears throat> my mom passed on very quickly and uh it was nine of us and I was fortunate that I was put in a orphan's home that was adopted when I was four years old. And uh, I was adopted and raised in Southern Indiana in a small town like this one. And I always never felt at home in Los Angeles. And I was out there, well, I had to make a living out there. And so I was very fortunate. But the good Lord gave me a chance to do shows like the Andy Griffith Show. Now, I'm going tonight. I'm going to do something special. Now, I tour all over, and everybody asked me, did I play the guitar on the Andy Griffith show? <laughs> right? Well, I'm going to tell you the truth. My agent called me and said, would you like to do the Andy Griffith show? I said, are you kidding? <laughs> of course I would. I've done a, a movie with Andy called the, the Savages. I believe that's the name of it. And so I went over there, and they said, well, can you play the guitar? Now, I am not in the habit of buying, so I said, are you kidding? I have two guitars, <laughs> which I did. I go over on the set, and they said, well, here's the music. I said, I can't play that. They said, well, you lied. You said you played the guitar. I said, no, I said I had two guitars. <laughs> I said, but I'll finger it in such a way enough somebody is a true musician won't know the difference. And so I did, and obviously the people liked it because they called me back next season, and I did it again, but that was really nice. <laughs> and the money was good. <laughs> anyway, uh, as I was telling you, I, I did get adopted, and I was very lucky oh, about 10, 15 years ago. I found out that the Everly Brothers were my first cousins. <laughs> Now, I don't know why I can't sing. <laughs> the jeans got lost in the wash somewhere. <laughs> anyway, I did write some lyrics for Gene Autry. I, I did some movies, television with Gene Autry and Hot Long Cast, you know, those people. Well, I was under contract to Gene Autry to write lyrics for some music. And uh, I, I got a couple of things that didn't amount to too much. Ricky Nelson, a couple of rec uh, records with Ricky Nelson, one with... with uh, uh, I'm kidding. I'm having a senior moment. For you. <laughs> they get closer and closer together. Anyway, <laughs> so I was writing a lot of songs, and I wrote this one song, and they turned it down. And I can't understand why, because I did a lot of westerns. I did a lot of them with Audie Murphy and, and with Jimmy Stewart and all these wonderful people. And uh, so I wrote a western song, because I like westerns. And I thought, I'll write, I'll write a very dramatic western. So bear with me. Now, I know this is supposed to be funny and everything, but this was serious. Now, picture a young man, a young cowboy. 
He stole on a horse. Now they caught him, and they're going to hang him. And so now they walked him with the 13 steps of the gallows to hang him. And when he gets up there, there's a tremendous crowd gathered around. And he's looking for a familiar face. And he sings this song. Remember, I can't sing. <laughs> hangman, hangman, slack your rope, slack it for a while. I think I see my mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was singing there. I know. That was not a song. <laughs> You're not a deputy either. Yeah, I'm a deputy. Look at that, buddy. I am here. I am the only boy in this building, and you got to nip at the butt. I got to protect these people from people like you. Let me let me tell you something. You tell me something. Yeah, you go ahead. You can't give me orders. No tiddly twin. Yeah, yeah, take that. Listen, I tell you why. Because I'm your commander. You know who I am? Who are you? Rust. Oh, people. Bonnie Piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me pull this karate out. <laughs> Bernard, fight. That, that, that's it. That's it right there. Fight. Fight. Oh, fight. Good. Not Piccolo. What is a roster of people train anyway? I tell you what he is. He's a commanding officer. You, you don't even know how to get a backup in case you have trouble. I, case you're out there. I go, and <laughs> How do you get back up? I say this. Yes. I didn't rush. Oh, you go. I thought I'd give you a little fat buddy. You got your ears on? Thank you. 
<laughs> you know, that is really something. We uh, we visited James's home down in Florida before he moved to Hickory. Did he tell you he moved to Hickory? And he's going to have a beautiful home over in Hickory. He and his lovely wife, Dorothy. And he showed us clips from westerns that he was in that I had forgotten about. I'd probably seen them at some point. But he has a whole reel of scenes where he was killed. <laughs> <laughs> These people would hire him because he could die better than anybody. <laughs> and it was fantastic to watch. It was about 45 minutes of uh, footage, and it was fantastic to watch. And he truly is. His name fits him well. He is the best. Mr. James Best. Let's see him. Ah, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's just one of the many, many amazing memories that we've uh, we've been able to develop over the years at uh, Mayberry Days. And wow, I, I just uh, James Best was always such a great friend to us. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you're just listening to the podcast and you're not hearing it, uh, yeah, or not seeing it, I guess if you're listening to it, you are hearing it. But if you're not seeing it, uh, maybe you want to take a minute and just head over to uh, Two Chairs No Waiting dot com and go to episode number 442 and watch the video version of this because it's uh, it's fun to see James and David Browning uh, interact. It is uh, an amazing thing to watch. Uh, there's many, many instances of this similar routine. Every one of them was completely different. They always were different. And uh, wow, what great memories. Now, if you have never been, I want to encourage you to head All right, so I'm going to cut that off for Alan in the past. Thank you, Alan, uh, for your report. And, guys, if you if you are only listening to this, uh, that was five a little over five years ago when I actually played that clip uh, originally. And uh, I was watching it recently and just started laughing and everything. I've, I've, I've seen that uh, a lot of times, but I laugh every time I saw it. So I hope you don't mind – that I played it again here on the podcast at episode number 712. I figure it's long enough ago that, uh, you know, if you, you might not mind seeing it again. Uh, but James and David, they also did uh, great stuff with uh, uh, the Copper Clapper Caper. And maybe I'll be able to show you that at some point in the future as well. But I definitely, I definitely wanted to make sure you guys got to see that. Uh, and uh, David Browning, it was amazing. He, he's just amazing. And uh, as long as we're talking about David Browning here, David Browning, who did Barney with us for many, many years, he got me started doing Floyd. He is, uh, he is now retired from being Barney. He's uh, got another show he's doing. Uh, I think it's the hats I have worn or something like that. Maybe getting it wrong, David, I'm sorry, but he has a great program that he's doing for some, some that he's not trying to get steady work doing stuff. I don't believe but uh, this is another instance that was at Mayberry Days. Now, this was in 2006 uh, when this occurred. And uh, this is something that David, I think he found it on the Internet, but he turned it into his own. And we've I've done it since then. But uh, nobody will ever top David Browning in his performance uh, that you're about to hear or see. Hopefully you're watching these because it's pretty amazing. So I'm going to throw this back to David. From Mayberry Days, 2006. Yeah. <laughs> 
of a yeast infection. from repeated pokes in the bed. <laughs> he was 71 years old. Dope boy was buried in a lightly greased coffin. <laughs> Dozens of celebrities turned out to pay their respects including Mrs. Butterworth, <laughs> Hungry Jack, the California Raisins, <laughs> Betty Crawford, and the Hostess Tweakers. <laughs> and Captain Crunch. <laughs> The graveside was piled high with flowers. <laughs> Aunt Jemima delivered the eulogy. She lovingly described Doughboy as a man who never knew how much he was needed. <laughs> Doughboy rose quickly <laughs> in show business, but his later life was filled with turnovers. <laughs> he was not considered a very smart cookie, wasting much of his dough on half-baked schemes, despite being a little flaky at times. Oh, he was still a crusty old man. He was considered a role model <laughs> to millions. Doughboy is survived by his wife, Play Doh. Three children. Here we go. John Doe. Jane Doe. And one and the other. <laughs> He's also survived by his elderly dad. Pop Tart. <laughs> The funeral was held at 3.50 for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so great. Uh, that was the very first time he had ever done that. David had found that uh, online. You know, somebody had emailed it to him or uh, you know, something like that. That's where it originally came from. And again, this was back in, uh, what did I say, 2006. Yeah, 2006 when this happened. And we did it many times, and I've done it after that. But I have never been able to live up to that performance that I just played for you. Uh, he did such a great job. Uh, and he was, if you're not watching the show, he was wearing a, uh, uh, a top hat and a long tail coat, uh, you know, tail coat, you know, like a, like a undertaker would wear in the old days. And he took his hat off when he got up there and hung it on one of the microphones. It was just, uh, 
It was just a great, <laughs> it was so fun. So I got one last thing I want to play for you uh, before we get out of here this evening. This is, uh, this is from uh, Mayberry Days. Uh, let's see, what year was this one? This is from 1995. Now, in 1995, uh, Doug Dillard uh, was performing at Mayberry Days. And this was, uh, I guess I had been doing Floyd for, the, this was my second year, my second year. The only other true tribute artists were David Browning, who was the first, and Phil Lee, not Phil Fox, but Phil Lee as Ernest T. Bass. Now, Phil Lee is Ernest T. in the Mayberry Man movie. So you'll see him on the Mayberry Man movie if you've, if you've seen that movie. That Ernest T. is Phil Lee. And he was the first Ernest T., at least for me, uh, that I can remember. Uh, so this was at the Doug Dillard uh, concert. Uh, at the at Mayberry Days in 1995, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this as well because I definitely encourage you to watch the video because uh, this video version of this podcast is definitely one you would probably want to see to be able to see this. So let me go ahead and start this. This is a guy, David Browning, uh, Phil Lee, and myself, along with Doug Dillard and his entire band playing at Mayberry. I remember very well the old dude and I There was a folk look sorry and the minister were out of time Now do you know their journey lies there all alone They put a jug beside him and a barrel for a stone Who leaves the little hobby? Who leaves the little hobby? Who leaves the little hobby? Oh my goodness, Doug Dillard and the Dillard Band, ladies and gentlemen, with Dooley. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, tonight's podcast. This is just a roll down memory lane for me. Uh, things I am thankful for are some of the things you saw in this episode. Last week I played the episode about being thankful, things to be thankful for about Mayberry, but these are some more continued things that I am thankful for. And I really hope you enjoyed and got some smiles out of this like I did because uh, it, it's just great. So, folks, again, I would love to hear from you. You can give me a call at 888-684-8415. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at floyd at imayberry.com or just head over to twochairsnowaiting.com and leave a message. And I'll get back to you. We'll try to use them here on the podcast. Folks, I want to thank you for 712 episodes of Two Chairs No Waiting. Uh, even if I do, do kind of throw a rerun in there a little bit every once in a while, I don't, you know, uh, this one's not quite a rerun, but I replayed parts of it. I hope you still enjoy it. And as long as we continue to love Mayberry, I believe we'll be around. So, folks, until next time, I'll see you back here on Two Chairs.